Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. October 30th, 2017. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It is, uh, what a day it is. It is not a day that you'll live in infamy, but it's a day that will live in clownishness. So it starts with Manafort. No one knows who he is. He worked for Trump for three minutes. And he's indicted for things that have nothing to do with the Trump. We don't know whether he did them or not. We know they broke his door down. They used Gestapo tactics on him, which the left applauded, incidentally. And that was before Weinstein. That was before Halperin. That was before Spacey. But very soon the left will come to understand that a fascistic government, no matter who is behind it, is not good for anyone. And then later in the day, another bombshell. Podesta resigns from his lobbying firm. Now you say, well, who is Manafort? Who is Podesta? That's exactly the point. The average person out there does not know who Paul Manafort is. They don't know who Tony Podesta is. This is all in-house gossip. It's uh, damn Repub, Repub Dem. They get the guy. They did Clinton. We They indicted Clinton. They impeached him. Nothing happened. So now we're going to get one of theirs. This is the way politics have devolved in America. I feel as though I'm watching the Ukrainian parliament itself. You know, one of the things I used to like about television when they showed uh, international news was the Ukrainian parliament when they beat each other up in Ukraine while wearing suits and ties. At least there was entertainment value. Why is there no such sport here in America? Why are they so polite to each other when they're stabbing each other in the back, I wonder? No one knows who Manafort is. No one knows he worked for Trump, uh, campaign manager, for three months. No one even knows who Podesta is, brother of former Hillary Clinton campaign chairman. And I ask today on Twitter, will Manafort crack and turn state's evidence, and against whom? No kidding. They used fascist technique, techniques, broke his door down, woke him up in the morning, seized his records. They indicted him, as I said they would. We all knew that was coming. Now what? The next, in the middle of the day, Tony Podesta, founder of the Podesta Group, brother of former Hillary Clinton campaign chairman Johnny, resigning from his lobbying company. Why? Because Tony Podesta and his lobbying firm were subjects of a federal investigation by the same special counsel, Robert Mueller. Okay? And the Podesta Group was one of several firms that worked in a campaign called the European Center for Modern Ukraine. The campaign was led by Paul Manafort and prompted Ukraine's image in the West. That's not a bad thing, is it? So, in other words, both Podesta and Manafort worked for Ukraine. Isn't that interesting? Now, you do know that Obama meddled in foreign elections. He meddled in the Israel election. That's a well-known fact with some vermin from New York City running opposition against Netanyahu. Obama meddled in the elections of at least three nations, and we hear nothing about it. But I, I'm telling you right now, I have a very good instinct for what the people out there feel, what they want to think about. They don't care about any of this. Do you think they really care about Mueller? Do you think they care about this guy who is like a Dracula right now? Mueller's Halloween, says the Drudge Report. He looks like a Dracula. I know he's a he's a revered American legislator. He ran the FBI. He's clean as a Eagle Scout. Bright. Great soldier. Yes, he was all of that. But once they become political... All of their good deeds of the past seem to dissolve. So I don't know that I can talk about that. I'll tell you what I really want to talk about on the Savage Nation. By the way, welcome to the show. Play the music again, because I do like that music. It's, there you go. That's all. It's Monday. Lighten up. Because I'm so clever. I mean, you have to. Meanwhile, here on the West Coast, we have an ongoing crime wave in San Francisco and the Enverones being swept under the uh, rug by the idiots who run the media who will never show the perps. It's now become that a gang of youths, 
You know what that's an acronym for. A gang of youths held up families at a Great America amusement park, and there was no description of the gangs by the vermin who run the San Francisco newspaper. I'm suspecting that the gang of youths were all Jewish and Christian youths on a Christian outing, and they held up normal families uh, with their children. That's the only guess I could make as to why they're covering it up, because they want to make certain that Jews and Christians are protected here in San Francisco. One man or a few men stood up to the gang youths as their wallets and phones were being stolen in front of their children, uh, and he was punched in the face. Now, where were they? This is a side note. Where was the security at California's Great America Amusement Park in Santa Clara while these gangs were assaulting families? Answer, they were working with the gangs of youths. Why, that's the same reason Best Buy went out of business in Sausalito. That's who they hired for security. The gangs that were holding up, that's my guess. Can't prove it. Should I play the music for the third time? Here's the real question that I want to talk about, which is this. Why are gigantic liberal supporters being destroyed all of a sudden? Who is behind it and why? You see, now that's a question you haven't asked yourself. We know Harvey Weinstein, one of the biggest left-wing big mouths in the history of the world. Now Halperin, who was one of the biggest of the biggest big mouths on the intellectual level, not on the film level, also brought down with accusations about he touched me, did this, he looked at me, touched me. He allegedly touched me, moved against me by the stove, and he was down. Now Kevin Spacey goes down. These are three gigantic liberals. So I asked myself, wait a minute, there is a pattern here. I'm trained to observe patterns as a trained scientist. What we learn is to, tr is, to s is to try to study patterns. You understand that? There are patterns in bird migration. There are patterns in disease. There are patterns in epidemics. There are patterns in indictments. So I asked myself, why are these liberal men being destroyed? Uh, well, I know O'Reilly was the first. or one of, No, no, it was the other guy. God rest his soul, never met him. But I think he blocked me at Fox News for a quarter of a century. Whatever his name was. I don't remember the guy, the bald the old guy. I don't know, whatever his name was. Who remembers? No, do I care. He's gone. He went. Uh, O'Reilly went on the alleged touching job. But then all of a sudden, it's big libs are going. Weinstein, Halperin, Spacey. And the odd part about Spacey is the gay community is going freakazola over it. All of the giant gays in the San Francisco area are freaking, saying, how dare he say he's gay and come out as gay at the time he was uh, accused of doing something inappropriate with a 14-year-old boy. So they don't like the fact that he came out as gay around kind of right after he was busted for making a sex pass on a boy when he was 14. Actor Kevin Spacey made sex pass when I was 14, says some actor who is now about 103. The actor's 103, what happened when... It doesn't matter. He was a 14-year-old kid. That's that's bad. That's terrible. That's as bad as it gets. Again, I'm a sexual libertarian myself. I've said that to you. I'll say it again until you hear me. The only thing I've ever said to you is, leave the children alone. If you touch the children, you cross the line. That's the end of the road. Okay, so Spacey allegedly did this when the kid was 14. Don't call me on this. And now others are coming... Look, can I tell you something? It's well known in Hollywood that he had a certain like, a certain liking for certain things. Let's put it to you that way. It was no secret in Hollywood that Kevin Spacey was a little bit of a space cadet when it came to certain kind of proclivities. So this is not a shock to anyone in the 90210 uh, area code, if that's the area code. I actually don't know it in Beverly Hills, but I think it's something like that. It kind of works. The 90210ers all knew that this was sort of what was. So it's not a shock, and that's all. But the thing is this, I'm asking a big question, folks. Why do you think big libs like Weinstein, Halpert, and Spacey are going down all of a sudden? I have, I have a theory. I have a theory on this. I really do. As to why all of a sudden big libs are going. Play the opening again. 855-4072. I think I play it all in. Hello, listener to the Savage Nation. On this Monday, I'd like to ask you, what kind of personality do you happen to have? Are you a moody person? Are you quiet? Are you happy to be alone? Do you spend much of your time thinking of yourself? Well, then you're probably an introvert. Folks, if you're the other type, are you a good mixer? Do you prefer the company of others to solitude? Uh, then you're probably an extrovert. Or, see, I could give you an ambivert if you want to know what you are. Do you know what an ambivert is? 
Do you feel that you have some of the qualities that I just listed in combined with some of those listed in two, meaning you're both intro and extro? That's sort of AC and DC, but it's not to do with sexuality. See, in common with most people, few of whom are pure introverts or extroverts, some of you are probably perverts, I mean ambiverts. And so that's why we're talking about all the verts today. And the phone number here is 85. I'm having a good time. Listen, I'll tell you something. When I started the radio, there was a phrase, have, a, have fun on the radio. That's what we used to say to each other. That's what program directors would say to hosts in the early days of radio in the 90s. Have fun on the radio. All of a sudden, every radio host became a combination of John Wayne and John Adams. I don't know how that happened. Now, I myself am a combination of Albert Einstein, Albert Schweitzer, and Frankenstein. I admit that. But the fact of the matter is, if I don't have fun on the radio, you're not having fun listening. And so, therefore, I intend to have a great deal of fun on the radio. And the way I'm going to do that is ask you to call me at 855-407-282. And I have <clears throat> one of the most fun things in months. It gave me such relief just before the show. I went on the New York Post. They have a video of a Democrat lawmaker from upstate New York uh, who broke down when a state trooper or a local cop pulled her over for speeding. You will not believe her as she screams, I have PSD! I have PTSD! What are you doing to me? You can't believe this. Why did you single me out? I have PTSD. I'm an important legislator. I'm on the way to work. Who are you? What kind of cop are you? I'm going to fight this. This is a liberal woman, especially in politics, to the, to the nth degree. I told you I see patterns. When you hear this tape, we have enough time, or have I finished the opening yet? I'm ready to plots here. I'm dying up here. Listen, no, I don't want to play it yet. Let them get ready for this. Who is Manafort? No one knows. Who is Podesta? No one knows. This is only an in-crowd thing, I'm trying to tell you. If you turn on CNN or MSNBC or Fox News, you would think that the average person in the street driving around thinks it knows who Manafort is, knows who Podesta is. It's lucky if they even know who any of the players are. They don't know who they are. Most of them don't care who they are either. They figure it's politics as usual in America, which has become disgusting. One is lower than the other. I know, uranium one, I don't even want to talk about it. I've heard it ad infinitum. You know what I'm saying? What do you want me to do about uranium one? What do I care that the Clintons look like traitors who sold out our uranium stores to Russia? What do you want me to do about that? Let the government do something about it. Let the newspapers do something about it. What do you want from me? Actor Kevin Spacey made sex pass when I was 14. I'm not into that. That's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Uh, I, I don't think that's a big deal at all. What is the biggest news of the day? Gangs of youths hold up families at Great America. No description of gangs. A hundred people, mostly teens. Again, no description of the teens. I suspect that they were all young priests and rabbis on an outing holding people up. And then they uh, beat people up, stole their wallets and phones. You know, rabbis and priests do that because that's what you have to assume since they're covering up any description of the teens. Got punched in the face, one visitor wrote. Park officials did not immediately return phone calls Monday. You realize there's a crime spree in the San Francisco area. Did you know that? Did you know liberalism is the most crime-inducing political philosophy on the planet? Did you know that you cannot walk in San Francisco without stepping on human feces? It is dried, of course. I uh, Don't get me wrong. But there's human feces all over the downtown financial district. And, of course, there's plague now spreading. There's hepatitis spreading. But don't tell the city fathers and mothers they're too busy robbing the treasury. At least that's what I think. Now, of course, I'm only a talk show host that doesn't exist. The phone number here is 855-407-282. If you care to join the host who doesn't exist, that's the number. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Dedicated to uh, Kevin Spacey, Push. Harvey Weinstein. Okay, welcome back. What great music this is! It's from a series. Uh, I heard it first on a. Uh, I think it's an HBO, a Showtime series called The Deuce. 
at first I hated the series. I hated it. I couldn't stand the main actor. I, I couldn't take a sneer. As it goes on, it gets better. It shows the birth of the pornography industry and, of course, the, the generation of New York City during, I, I don't know what years those were, the 70s, pimps, prostitutes, the mafia, when they first put in those uh, self-gratification machines that they put quarters in. It's a piece of American cultural history. This was all pre-internet pornography. Now, of course, it's clean as a whistle owned by major corporations. A lot of the tax money going to saving the elephants and the seals. I understand that. Uh, museums and whatnot, museum trust boards, interlocking corporate directorships and all that. But in the early days, the rough and tumble days of New York when it was a cesspool, it became an interesting uh, phenomenon to watch. And some of the stock footage is interesting. The music's great. The acting's good. And, of course, that whole phenomenon is good. That's I'd rather talk about that than the Uranium One, Uranium Two. I don't know what you're getting so excited, everyone, about. Hillary allegedly, the Clintons allegedly, selling off America's uranium stores to Russia. Why does that bother you? Did you ever think that there was a, an altruistic component to the Clintons in making that deal of the uranium, allegedly making that deal, that they were just trying to balance the power in the world to reduce world tensions? So they made a few million on the side for doing it. But, you know, all good work is worthy of a few million dollars here and there. So they were trying to balance the power between the U.S. and Russia by letting the Russians buy most of our uranium stores. And so, therefore, they could make atomic weapons and we couldn't. It, it was a good thing in many ways from their point of view because it reduced the militarism of the evil white men who run America. Now, it is true that there are evil white men who run Russia, but they're not as evil because they, they're communists at the time. And, as you know, communistic evil white men are not as evil as capitalistic evil white men. So the Clintons really not may not be as predatory as you think. You're not looking at it in the right way. All right. Look, I'm going to keep doing this. I may just wind up talking about the engine rebuild on my Jaguar XKE as much as talk about this. Sex revolution. Realistic dolls will change human interaction forever. That scared me. That would really, really scare anybody to look at that. Realistic dolls? The Stepford Wives come to you in plastic now? Well, I don't know. It would reduce the Weinsteins, the Halperins, and the Spaceys in a way, when you think about it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7287-SAVAGE. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. I live and die in San Francisco. This is the Savage Nation. And I'm not William Friedkin. I don't even know him, but I love the sound to that music, uh, to that, that soundtrack to that movie. It seems to be my life today. Pounding, 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 pounding. Who's banging the hammer in there? Who am I imitating when I do that? Who's hitting a hammer? Everyone knows who that is by now. He's a wonderful, wonderful socialist talk show host on uh, More Snotty Nonsense by Chicks, who... Uh, put down General Kelly for being low-class Irish while he was high-class Irish from the same city. And, of course, that's why uh, Pill Griffin keeps him on, on MSNBC, because they hate they hate the poor. They have a contempt for anybody who lives west of the Hudson or east of Eden. Will Manafort crack and turn state's evidence? That's the object. How can we speculate on what he's going to do? He worked three months for him. Now they indicted him on nothing to do with the campaign. This is what happens in a Stalinist government. You think that this is kosher? You're wrong. And I don't really care how fair-minded people are saying, um, whatever his name is, the DA. I don't remember his name. I'm supposed to know his name. Mueller, 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 the tall guy. Uh, he's not being fair because once they open an indictment, they can go anywhere in it. They were, they were investigating the Russia collusion story, right? But they found nothing, so they got him on something else. All right, fine, but what does it have to do with Donald Trump? Nothing, but the vermin in the media already made a linkage. The linkage is already, Trump's campaign manager indicted. Well, on what, though? This is how Wolf Blitzer uh, thrives. This is how they thrive on innuendo and smear. They're worse than you can imagine. See, I'm being nice today. I had some other words that I just checked, and, and, and I checked. You know, I wonder at the end of days what a man like Wolf Blitzer thinks. I, or myself, for that matter. You don't know. I mean, I'm, look, my book is God, Faith, and Reason. you you got to understand this is on my mind. And every day I think of the crypt or the box. And I try to, like, get it out of my head. But, I mean, you really ask yourself, is there a hereafter? 
Uh, do you meet God? Does he judge you? Or is it all a joke to constrain the stupid people while the people who are really smart get to do anything they want their whole lives and they die just like you do and there's nothing? There's just an imaginary thing the whole life? Don't think people don't ask themselves these questions. But I don't want to go into God, faith, and reason. I'm not going to do that. I mean, I put something up uh, over the weekend. Does God exist? Where is he? Why do bad things happen? People love that question. And I'm not going to talk about that. But uh, I don't know. I don't think God cares about us much anymore. I think he created us, and he got so fed up with what man was doing on this planet to each other and to himself that he disappeared. He forgot this universe even exists. I know that's cynical, and you don't want to hear it. That's not what's in God, faith, and reason, but I think I've become more cynical since the book was written. What do you think, I'm going to sit here like a phony preacher? I'm not going to do that. I'm <laughs> one of those guys, you know. I know many of you out there don't believe, but I promise you, if you buy my book, you will find God Almighty in a teardrop on your wall. No, not me. Trust me, I know how to do it. I could have been a guru 30 years ago. I could be a big mega preacher today, but they're so phony it makes my my toes curl up inside my sandals. And I'm not I'm not a guy who rides on a mule. Let me put it to you this: I don't ride on a donkey. My toes curl up in my sandals when I hear those guys. I know many of you out there are dirty sinners, just like I was. But when I fell, I found Jesus on the bottom of the sewer. That's what you want to hear. Hmm. That jasmine tea is really good. John, WABC, line four. What's on your mind, John? Yes, Doc Savage. I just wanted to say how you always warn us about history repeating itself and lest we learn our lessons. And this sounds eerily similar with a couple in the 50s, I forget their name, who gave up the secrets of the atom bomb. Wait, wait, you're, wait you're talking about the Rosenbergs who, who traded on the United States development of the atomic bomb and sold it, gave it to to uh, Russia because they were communists, uh, and they were executed for it in the early 1950s because they did the most horrible thing you could do to a nation. Are you saying the Clintons' uranium scandal is equal to the Rosenbergs? Uh, not yet, because we're still innocent until proven guilty. However, uh, uh, eerily similar is that it also touched off, I believe, the Cold War. And so now everybody has to be careful and hating communists and all this stuff that actually could have been avoided, you know. But uh, I guess it wasn't. It wasn't in the cards. But the Clintons... Well, let me tell you something. You're, you're touching on a nerve that, that really bothers me a lot, because I've said it before. When Hillary Clinton started to smear Putin, it was two to three years ago, she called him Hitler. I distinctly remember the speech. I said, every alarm bell went off in me. I said, she's covering something up. For her to call another world leader who's a major nuclear power, Hitler, and all of a sudden the chorus of little people, all the way down to the wolf blitz of ventriloquist, started saying, Russia no good, Russia this, Russia tampered. There is a mass hysteria against Russia in this country, started by Hillary Clinton's campaign, in order to throw mud in the eye of those who are really looking at what her and her husband were doing. And the danger here is that it could lead to a war with Russia, which is the last thing we need right now. And I think that's what you're intimating. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it, it, it's just that... Uh, I get it, all right, I get it, I get it. It's too early already in the week for me to burn a, a fuse out over it. I'm going to send you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. That's all. That's all, we'll move on. It's in God's hands. You know, when I can't deal with something lately, maybe it's because I'm getting wiser as I get older, I just, I say, you know what, I, I do the Italian shrug. Italian friends I knew were very big. Well, you, you got them cornered on something, this, that, something was bothering you in the world, they go like, eh, they just shrug their shoulders. Eh. Bueno, bono, bueno, bueno, bono, bueno, bella, 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 bella. Everything was beautiful. Everything was more beautiful than something else. Try the vino as bella. Try the parmesan as bono. What is the difference? What can I do? What am I going to do? Eat my heart out over it? If they did what we think they did with transferring through the Canadian front company, the sale of the uranium mines to Russia, that is absolute treason. Now, what's going to happen? You know in this country, if you're poor and you pass a traffic light, you get a ticket. If you're poor and you steal a pencil from a supermarket, you can get arrested. Probably beaten up with a nightstick somewhere in the back of the supermarket, first by a security guard, and then you're arrested for resisting arrest. 
if you are rich in America and you commit enough crimes, then you show the aptitude to become a politician. And then you start the long road up. And it depends upon how many crimes you have gotten away with to attract the attention of those at the top. Because if you get away with enough big crimes, they'll say this person has the aptitude to be a congressman. Now, if you get away with crimes that approach treason, you're right in the Senate. Then the big party bosses come to visit you, and the world opens up. First, you get a job on the news in the news media. You're seen as a brilliant talking head, and people think that you're put there because you're so smart or good-looking, but you're actually put there by the, by the CIA. You know how many people are working for the CIA in the media right now? I wouldn't know, but I guarantee a lot of them are there because they have no ratings, and yet they're on CNN and MSNBC. Why are they there? Why are they there? Why do they give uh, some of them glasses, fake glasses, when they don't even have astigmatism to make them look intelligent, when they're just script readers like John Stewart? You tell me why. But the biggest question of the day, which ties into the secret ha hands behind it all, it's not that I believe in the in the the uh, the black hand. I believe in the secret hands that control everything. I believe that when Plato wrote, the shadows on the wall are all we're seeing. Plato was right. He saw it in ancient uh, Greece. We don't actually see what's going on. We don't even see the puppets. All we see are the shadows of the puppets. So we don't really know. We're seeing triangulations of triangulations. But all of a sudden, when I see big men, big liberals like Weinstein, a Trump hater, a gun hater, a lib of the highest order going down for the count, and then all of a sudden this guy Halperin, he may not be a household word to you, but he was a big New York intellectual he had it all, TV, uh, an HBO series, book deals. He had it all. All of a sudden, he went down. Now Kevin Spacey, another one went, I can't say he went down, uh, another one fell. i got to watch my language here because some of the language applies too aptly and I can be accused of accusing him of something. I can't say he went down. He So a guy like Spacey, he fell. Next, he fell. Why are all these libs falling? Why? Why are they dropping? You see, this is the pattern that I see emerging. And, of course, this is a war on not just uh, liberal men, but it's a war on men in general. When have you seen a woman taken down for uh, any kind of allegations of this nature? Do you actually believe powerful women in Hollywood do not have sex with young actresses or actors who want parts? Are you joking? You think it's a one-way street? I don't. So we'll wait. Well, we'll see when that one happens. But that's not what I was getting at. I was getting at something else. I believe, and I know this is a real reach in the dark, that guys like Weinstein, Halpert, and Spacey, who are far left, all of them, burn somebody who knows the inside of all of us. And that includes you, me, and everyone else. Someone who has all of our secrets. And for some reason, they had turned on this someone, that is Weinstein, Halpert, and Spacey, calling for his or her head, if you follow the uh, drift here. While I'm not so sure I ever called for the head of this person who I think has the dope on all of us, who is at this time living in an embassy somewhere on earth and can't come home again. Because there is a book that was written many years ago called You Can't Go Home Again, and of course that book was a very prescient book in the sense that none of us can ever go home again. We can never, ever, ever achieve innocence after a certain age. Which is why I get back to you, the listener, and the caller at 855-407-282. Am I talking in riddles? Is it too riddly? riddly? Is this too bow diddly uh, and too many riddlies? I don't know if I'm going to do Mueller anymore. I know you want him to go. He's not going. He's not stepping down. No, Trump is not going to uh, dismiss him. If he does, if he does Trump's um, going to be impeached. Trump can't do anything but let it play out. And what's going to happen here is they don't really want Paul Manafort. You know that. You mean, come on, let's be le obvious. This is the way they went after people in organized crime. This is the standard operating procedure. They get anyone they can on anything. Then they flip that person to get the next one up the chain. Then they flip that one, then the next one up the chain. That, 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 till they, they go for the peasant Avante, so to speak, look at the Bavalacci papers or whatever. And eventually try to bring down the whole. They don't achieve it. They never have achieved it. They've never gotten to the top. They never will get to the top. They never get to the bottom. All it does is just it satisfies the masses. We just want to see blood sport. All of us love this very much because it takes us out of our boring little lives. And also we also must remember 
that I told you the average man has such a horrible life. The average person has such a horrible life, I should say today. I'm so sexist sometimes. I, I can't get used to it. I say the average man. There are women in the world. I came to understand that after many years of thinking about it. The average person in the world, shall I say the average humanoid in the world, leads such an ordinary life of desperation that when they see big people falling, it makes them feel good that they're not big. What they say is, aha, thank God I'm not well known. I'm safe. No one knows me. See what I'm saying? That's how that works. When I return, there will be a live read, another ad, then more ads, and another ad, then another ad, then two seconds of me talking, and then a break with more ads, and then when I come back, there'll be an opening and two minutes of talk, and then more ads, and then a break, and then more ads, and I'll be right back to give you more ads and more of me squeezed in between various things on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. If you've never heard of nitric oxide, listen carefully. Nitric oxide is one of the most important molecules in your body. Promotes healthy circulation, which gets the oxygen and nutrients flowing throughout the body, helps support healthy blood pressure. And I've told you, you can help your body produce this nitric oxide naturally by drinking super beets. Only super beets is made from beets grown to exacting standards, and then they concentrate the nutrients in a way that makes them usable to the body to create nitric oxide very safely and very naturally. So if you want to increase your body's nitric oxide levels, call 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com. And with your first order, you're going to get another 30-day supply of Super Beats free plus indicator strips to see how Super Beats is working and free shipping. It's a great deal. Call 800-481-0504, 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com today so we got the scandals now the witch hunt going on the manafort look i'm not going to give you the mixed chop meat that you're going to get from other shows on this i know what you want to hear i know all the keywords all the buzzwords trump is innocent he did nothing manafort has nothing to do with him it's a fishing expedition mueller has to go uh hillary clinton's uranium one scandal is far worse they should be indicted i get that that's mixed chop meat from mixed species sold from China and given to you on other talk shows. But I don't want to give you mixed chopped meat from various species that have been in transit for a couple of months now. I'd really rather give you filet mignon of the mind, but most of you don't even know how to digest that. So there's nothing I can do about it except do what I do, which is give you the steak and hope you enjoy it. And so when I come back, you'll have more steak from Michael Savage on any topic that you wish. Patrick on KSFO Line 8, what's on your mind, Patrick? Yeah, so uh, since I couldn't get God, faith, and reason until the 14th, I bought Trump's war. Uh, and I'm right on page 99. I couldn't put it down this weekend. I just want to thank you for making it easy reading for the Eddie. And uh, speaking of Plato, uh, I had no idea that celebrities have been cons for so long. So just wanted to... You, wait, 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 wait. You, you, didn't, you didn't know celebrities were what for so long? I didn't know celebrities had been cons for so long. I didn't know Plato had laid this out since the Roman times. Oh, 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 oh. he warned us about actors. Yeah, I mean, but what, you see, here's the problem in America. We love our actors, but we should understand they're only fakers. And we should never rely upon them for anything reliable because they don't know what they're talking about. They're good actors. And the more they can fake it, the better they are as an actor. But we don't rely upon them for political ideas. Oh, you're reading page 99 in Trump's Culture Wars in the book. I see what you're saying. Oh, we're seeing what Plato saw right here in America today. Take a look at the degenerates in the music business. You may like the tunes. I like the music, too. But I also think about the effect it has on people. That's why the left controls the arts. By controlling the arts, they control minds. Oh, I wrote that. Little did I know I was so ahead of my time. Well, my friend, thanks for reminding me what I wrote. I will then send you a copy of my new book, God, Faith, and Reason, out. Gee, it's two weeks now. There's good news out there. And the good news is that I'm still here. I'm still kicking. And I'm not going anywhere. And I'll be back in the next hour. And we'll talk about all the topics of the day and try to avoid the chop meat. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. 
Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.